What a great intro cinematic to kick a game off. Cute kid playing in his treehouse, the goddamn red truck ambushes and knocks him off with brutal consequences. There's hope yet though, the kid is now a middle-aged genius and has created both an autonomous repair bot thing and a time-traveling microwave to send the previous thing back into the past. Oh fuck yeah, I'm all about saving this kid's spinal cord and destroying the backstabbing fucking piece of shit red truck. Does the actual follow-up deliver on the same level as the start is the real question here. And, well, I'm not sure. Chapter 1, we arrive back in the past controlling Wally's long-forgotten, or actually never even known cousin Blinky. Our relationship is in the get-to-know-each-other stage, he's not sure whether I'm the right person to control him, and I didn't even know my game relationship status is open, but whatever, while we're already in this mess, might as well try and enjoy it. As always, the early adventures and experiences are going great. Visuals are not only pretty, but the amount of detail is impressive. Controls seem to be tight, the promised gameplay loop of finding the traitor truck is one that pushes us forward, mouth wet from the thought of imminent revenge, and the sounds. The sounds are the cherry on top of the cake. The little whirring of Warby's rig is a pleasure that brings back memories of playing with LEGO Technic products, but the way movement makes sense as your wheels make different noises based on the surface they're currently traveling is even more satisfying. There's just the very slightest concern that emerges, softly scratching at the back of my mind with regards to the genre and longevity of the concept, but who cares, pink clouds and shit everywhere, let's focus instead on that. Turns out, revenge on the truck comes sooner than expected, and while coming fast isn't something super unexpected at the beginning of a new relationship, you'd still prefer for the climax to last a bit longer, wouldn't you? Alas, revenge apparently wasn't even good enough to knock time into a new, preferable bed, so we continue our light platforming, sprinkled with light puzzle solving, to get from A to B, where we can interact with a specific item in a specific way. Attempting to avoid any major spoilers, I'll say the roughly 3 hours long game is split into 3 parts, all about attempting to fix mistakes. At first, it's all pretty fun actually. The core concept behind Chapter 2 might or might not surprise the player, dependent on one's experience with the whole time travel concept and its possible hiccups, but completely unrelated to me not feeling any surprise by the plot, this was the time where it started to sit down and get a bit dull for me. Just low-key, just softly, barely noticing it subconsciously, but while I was still curious to see where the story was going, I became less and less interested in playing the actual game, as it started to just feel like an obstacle in my way with its slow pace, keeping me from getting to see the story unfold faster. This became even more the situation during Chapter 3, where I started actively wishing for the gameplay part to end. This also really wasn't helped by how the gameplay started to move away from the casual platformer adventure towards an action platformer direction, with timed jumps and gadget uses, while the controls and the environment just aren't fleshed out enough for such. By the time I reached the end of Time Loader, I really didn't want to spend a single more second with it. Even with the temptation being there, as the game offers multiple endings based on how thoroughly you play and search through the environment, well, maybe if I didn't play it all in one sitting, but instead over a longer period, but then again, there's only so much available fractioning on a 3 hour game. Instead, I'm left with this bittersweet memory of a game that I enjoyed halfway through, but then didn't enjoy at all for the second half. Luckily, at least, the most vivid memory is the sound of little R2's wheels pleasantly interacting with different surfaces. Oops. 
As always, we'd be very grateful if you please the machine gods by liking our video. If you'd like to come along for our next review, don't hesitate to subscribe. Any and all recommendations are welcome in the comments section. Pretty please try not to fuck up space time. And we'll see you again soon.